Dear viewer, welcome again to our season of 40 days of prayer. Today is the faith since we began this uh, very important, inspiring, reviving uh, sessions with the Lord. We seeking the Lord concerning various, you know, aspects of our lives as a Christians. And if you're joining us for the first time, just to let you know, this is an initiative of the General Conference of the Adventist Church that the entire global church may come together in 40 days, team together in prayer and seek the Lord, that God may visit with the church in a very special way and especially now that we're approaching the General Conference session. This being our faith day, I want to invite you uh, to be part of this experience I know the Lord is blessing his people, globally those who are involved in this uh, prayer, and I know even you today, you will be part of the blessings. Now today, I'm so privileged to be joined uh, in uh, this uh, program by my friend here, and um, he, he is a Christian and a believer, a strong believer in God, and, and I want to uh, invite him. Uh, brother, what, what's your name? Maybe begin by telling us your name. What's your name? Thank you so much. My name is Kenneth Oma, and I fellowship at Berea SDA Thank you, Brother Kennedy Oma from Berea SDA Church. Those of you asking Berea where? Berea is one of the churches in the city. And so he is our friend and uh, we are happy to have him here as we do this program. Ken, uh, tell me something about prayer. Because this is basically about prayer. As a Christian, uh, do you believe in prayer? Have you experienced the power of prayer? And what can you tell our viewer about prayer? Yes, Pastor, I believe in prayer. Uh, personally, I believe prayer is the breath of life from God. It's an opportunity for me to interact with God on a more personal way. To me, prayer is not just about things, external things I ask God to do for me. Prayer is about interacting with God in a more personal way as we will have a, a closer relationship. Well, very powerful, you know, a yeah. profound, you know, uh, statement there that prayer is not about what you expect God to do for you externally, but actually what you experience in, internally when you go through, you know, prayer. And I uh, think very, very, you know, blessing in my soul this morning because many people, you know, come to God because expecting big miracles, uh, but then we forget about what God is doing in our hearts and the peace that comes in our heart and in our minds when we are with him. Now, uh, be, 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 because of time, tell me briefly, how did you come to know about the 40 days of prayer? Yeah, the, I, I knew it was coming because it was announced at church, but somehow I forgot. Mm -hmm. But then a day before it started, I saw a friend posting on his uh, WhatsApp profile. Wow. Then it reminded me and I went into the program and I downloaded and I'm following day by day. Wow, very, very profound. I mean, there are so many ways that you can let your neighbors, your friends know that we're in season of 40 days of prayer. He learned it from just a WhatsApp status. And wow, so this program has started. And so please do something, you know, let other people know. Go to your Facebook account, Twitter, wherever. Speak, let's talk about 40 days of prayer. Let this be our language, you know, our heat for this particular season that many people as possible may come to know about this season of prayer. Now, I will be bringing in Brother Ken later uh, as we take a moment to pray. Thank you so much, Brother Ken. But now I want us to have just a little moment and share a thought that is going to usher us into the mood of prayer. Now, we are going to read from the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 16 and verse number 25. But before this, let's ask the Lord for blessings. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the privilege of this moment of prayer. We thank you and invite the power of the Holy Spirit to be with us right here and even to our viewers, wherever they are following from. May you cause your blessings to flow upon our lives that we can experience you. And even as we share this scripture thought, may you inspire this to be a blessing to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Acts of Apostles chapter 16 and verse number 25. Paul and Silas are in prison. For the cause of Christ. In fact, when you begin from verse number uh, 22, coming down, you see uh, people have turned against them. In verse number uh, 23, they have been uh, 
arrested, they are being, uh, you know, persecuted, and uh, they are being cast into prison. That is verse number 24, I mean 23. And verse number 24, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. They are in prison because they are preaching Christ and they have been chained inside the prison. There's no movement, there's no freedom. They can't escape and there are guards that are put at the gates to guard them. Now in verse number 25, which is our thought this morning, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Verse number 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all oh, the doors were opened and everyone's hand were, were loosed. You know, powerful text here. Now, Paul is in prison with sailors for prison, preaching Christ. Now, they don't know what to do because, you know, the prisons of those days, are, you know, and even today, you know, prisons are well guarded. Big wars and massive wars and massive doors and, you know, um, the military guys positioned strategically to ensure that the prisoners may not escape. But it goes on to indicate that Paul, even while they were in the inner room in the prison, they meant they are inside the prison and then put in the inner room and then chained. So that they, man, they, they could, there was no way they could have escaped. Now the Bible says that they were there in the mid of the night, midnight. Paul and Sila discover that they may be here forever. They may be here until maybe they, will be, they may die in this prison. There's no one they know that can come and help them come out of prison. They remembered there is one power that God has given us that can change the course of this life, can, can change things that man, people can't imagine. They remember the power of prayer. And the Bible says, and at, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed prayed and sang praises unto the prisoners and to God and the prisoners hung them and then suddenly you know the doors of prison the chains fell off the doors opened and Paul and Silas were free to walk out when we pray when we pray when we pray things happen when we pray the prison gates open when we pray the chains for off, when we pray and sing praises to God, something happened that we surely would witness and say, this is because of the power of prayer. Now, look at this. The Bible says at the midnight, you know, midnight, it is, to me, symbolic of you know, if they were expecting from the time they were thrown into prison, perhaps expecting help may come, and, and they would look at their watches, they're expecting somebody may come. The sun sets, they're expecting somebody may come. It is maybe a nine or so. They're expecting somebody is coming to, to help them. But then they discover it's getting late and late in the night. Now, midnight is when everyone is asleep. It is when no help is expected. Midnight in our situation is when you are in a situation where you are lost of any idea on how you can help yourself. You are at a fix. It is a minute the, 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 when the deck cracks. That is where Paul is. And then the Bible says they remember prayer. Now, what do you do when you are in that middle Middle, or not, not mid, middle, when in the crisis, at the center of crisis, and when every hope has vanished, what do you do? Well, pray. Because when you pray, the Bible says, when they prayed and sang praises. Do you praise God when you're in challenge? Do you praise God when you're in trouble? Do you praise God when you're heartbroken? Do you praise God when your marriage is breaking? Do you praise God when you have been sacked from your employment? Do you praise God when you are going through a nasty experience? You know, many people don't remember to praise God. In fact, people curse God. Others, when you stop going to church, you feel there's no need of even praying because something ugly is happening in your life. But I learned it from Paul and Sheila. When they were in that tight situation in their life, they remember not only to pray, but to praise the Lord. Oh, what a powerful thought this morning. 
that we can praise our problems away. We can praise our challenges away. We can praise our pain away. We can praise our frustrations away. When Paul was in prison, the midnight, Paul and Silas chose to pray and praise their problems away. And the prison's gate and the chains fell off. What a powerful moment God has given us. That no matter what you're going through this morning, at the feet of Jesus, and one moment with the Lord can change the course of your life. Won't you come along with us this morning, or this evening, or this afternoon, wherever you're watching us from, in faith, whatever you're going through, you can pray and praise God for it, and ask him to intervene, and surely something will happen. So I welcome you this morning, I welcome you this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, that in faith you may bring your petitions to him. And I, as, as I am inviting Brother Ken to come and, and join with me, that together we may lift you in prayer. I want you to be of faith because God has promised that any prayer made in faith, it shall bring results. Any prayer that has been made in faith, it shall avail much than you can imagine. So I want you to be of faith. Look deep into your life. Look deep into the situation and believe that God is powerful. God is able. For without faith, we cannot please God. Because everyone who comes to him must believe that he rewards those who seek for him diligently. And this is a privilege, opportunity you have to give all your petitions to him in prayer. Uh, Brother Ken, I was checking through what the General Conference has posted for us to share uh, this um, day. Um, I, I see number one. Uh, I pray, it says, pray for the upcoming General Conference sessions, which is starting in June uh, 6th to 11th in St. Louis, USA. And also we need to pray for opportunities uh, to personally mentor and disciple new believers. Uh, what other prayers do you, uh, do you have to pray this morning? Yes, we are also guided to pray for God's will for the upcoming church elections and appointment of new leaders. Mm -hmm. Again, we are to pray for the on-site prayer room at the general conference session and the online virtual prayer room uh, that many would attend. Wow. Great. Remember, I know you already have a list of seven people that you are praying for. If you're joining us for the first time in the fourth days of prayer, we have been requesting to choose just seven people. You can do more than that, but at least seven people that you want to commit and test the Lord with in, through this experience. So the, the list you have for seven people, please, this is a time once again you lift them by their names to the Lord. And so as you're joining us in prayer, where we are praying from here and wherever you are, you may choose to kneel down or stand and do whatever, but just take your time, if it is possible with you, just pray for yourself and also remember the seven people in your list. If you don't have us going to give you and to guide you onto the people that you need to intercede for. Right here for us in Nairobi Central Church, we are praying for our church. We are praying for our soon coming come meetings. Our come meetings are scheduled to be begin on 2nd of July through to 9th of July, we are praying for our speakers, the planning, the membership and resources. Join us praying for this. We also pray for the indwelling and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit within our membership that we will be revived and reformed. So please join with us as we pray. Brother Kenneth is going to start and then I'm going to end the prayer. In faith, let's seek the Lord together in prayer. Okay. Let us bow down our heads for a word of prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we glorify your name. What a privilege it is for us to appear before you, that you may breathe your life to us in the session of prayer. Lord, we lift up before you the coming general conference session. We pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, during this time, as we are going to pray for the new leadership of the church, we pray that, dear Lord, you may give us leaders who have been appointed by yourself, who will lead this church to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we pray that you may guide all our leaders as we assemble together in this a solemn exercise. May your spirit alone be made manifest and your name be revealed in a special way. Yes, Lord. Lord, we also pray for those who will be praying 
in the prayer rooms during this session. Mm. The dear Lord, you may attend to each and every prayer that will be made. And to all those who are joining on the online prayer sessions, Lord, we pray that many may come in. And this means to us that many prayers will be answered. Lord, we pray for your will, even in the 40 days as we seek your face in prayer. Mm. We pray in the same prayers that your spirit may fill our hearts, that we may rejoice and experience in a special way the touching of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May your name be glorified in everything we do now. Until the end of this session, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, continue to thank and praise your name for this very special privilege you have given us. Give us a privilege of being before you for 40 days. We thank you on this fifth day. So far, we have experienced your power, your presence, your renewing, your refreshing. And we pray even today that, Father, you may meet us at our very point of need. We have unique struggles. But we thank you that the text for this day has reminded us it doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter the challenge, how ugly or how tight or you know, things may turn against us, but we have seen there is power in prayer. Paul and Silas, they were put in prison, right inside the inner room in the prison, chained in there that they would never escape. Indeed, there was no way they could have escaped. There was no one who could have helped them, but yet we have so a near source of power and strength and help. In times of need, you just a call, you just a call away. And so they remembered that secret weapon you have left to the Christians, prayer. The Bible says in the midnight, they began to pray and to praise, and the prison gates opened, and the chains fell off. They walked freely without any fear. And this law in this moment, that my dear viewer, may also believe to pray and praise their problems away. And the the challenges, the afflictions, the prison gate that have burned them, they are not able to be free in their lives. It could be stress or depression or many challenges within the marriage set up at workplaces, in church, around in the community. There are many challenges that are afflicting your people and many have surrendered to such kind of afflictions. Yet, Lord, we know that we, uh, we have help through prayer. And Lord, we this morning, we're exercising our faith in prayer that all oh, the chains that your children have been chained with may be broken in Jesus' name. All the prisons where your people have been caged may be opened and set free in Christ Jesus. The Lord will shall testify. Indeed, my life looked like I was in a prison, but Jesus has set me free. Those addicted and hooked by habit and behaviors, Lord, there's a time for them to be set free through breaking of those kind of chains. Mm -hmm. And I know there is power in prayer. Lord, as your children surround this power in prayer from all corners of this city and this country and globally, Lord, may you listen to our prayers. We thank you even for our church. We are preparing for the come meeting that is starting in the month of July 2nd to 9th. We are committing this holy convocation to you, Lord, and before you. You shall give us men and women you shall use to speak to us. You shall also prepare our souls and our hearts to receive you, that there will be a revival of true godliness that will be experienced in our come meetings. We are praying for a conference, the many programs they're having, the leadership. We are also praying for the church in this part of the world, we're also praying for the nation, the country, Kenya. We are nearing our elections. Lord, we are praying that you shall intervene and bring peace as we go through these elections. That your people shall have humble time to worship you, praise you, and fellowship together. Bless us and give us miracles and of experiences through these 40 days of prayer. I thank you for Brother Ken. Lord, may you meet him at his very point of needs. We remember his church, Berean. Bless them, my father. Bless those people that you have put in that assigned of the world. And you can use them to be a blessing to the community and people around them. Prepare us for the soon coming. Revive us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, my dear viewer for choosing to be part of, our, of us in these 40 days of prayer journey. I know the Lord is blessing you. Please, if you have not subscribed to our website or our YouTube channel, just, just click that button. But more importantly, just share. If you've been blessed, share with as many people as you can that we all may be blessed. May the Lord be with you. Till we meet tomorrow. God bless you.